How long does it take to close on a loan? How's it going everyone? Matt Layton and today we're answering that very question. So whether it's a FHA, VA or conventional loan, how long has it taken a lender to close on that loan? Well, lucky for you guys, we have a lender right here. Sean, why don't you take it away and answer the question of the day, how long does it take to close on a loan? Well, not to feel like I'm pumping uh, myself or other local mortgage banks up, but that timeline is really going to depend on the type of institution you use. Um, I would say that if you're working with a bank whose operations are local and kind of do everything under one roof, you could probably look at a typical timeline being about three weeks for FHA and conventional, probably more towards four weeks or a month for a VA loan just because of the appraisal process and how that operates. Now, if you're going with a national bank or credit union, I would do yourself a favor and probably build in 30 to 45 days into any of those loan products um, to make sure that uh, you don't put yourself at risk for missing a closing. Okay, so it sounds like VA is the one that takes the longest because of the appraisal process. When you're closing on the loan, what are kind of the, the steps that are taken? Like is, is the appraisal the first step? Is underwriting the first step? Why don't you touch on maybe two or three or all of the steps in what order and kind of how long that they take? Yeah, sure. So from a bird's eye view, once uh, Matt writes up your amazing contract and gets your offer accepted, what you're gonna do with us, um, or what we're gonna do with you, I'm sorry, is send you a loan application to sign. Now obviously you'd be having a conversation with your loan officer long before this to structure what type of loan program you're going with, what the down payment's going to be, what interest rate uh, structure and things like that you'll have. But once we have the contract, then we have all the tools we need to put together your loan application package, send that out to you to be signed. Now once you sign that loan application process, now that puts us to work. Okay. Now we're also going to be requiring of you paperwork that hopefully if you're prepared and you've done your homework up front, you've already provided with your lender, but at this point we 100% need all the financial documents, bank statements, pay stubs, W-2s, tax returns, etc., etc. Now once we receive all that information, now your loan goes through processing. Now in processing, we're doing a once over of all these documents to you know, look to make sure they match up with the numbers that they're supposed to, to make sure there's no issues or things that we need to look into further, and we're ordering everything that needs to be ordered. As you know, there's 10,000 things behind the scenes that need to be ordered, but the ones that are going to be most important to you as the buyer is going to be your appraisal, which determines the value of your property. Obviously, a bank does not want to lend you $500,000 if they find that your property is not valued at $500,000. Matt will be helping you with your home inspection, so I don't have much to do with that. But tax transcripts, tax records, flood certifications, helping you um, with your homeowner's insurance, all these things uh, are gonna have to be done at this process, uh, that process, so when the loan is prepared and we have all the information, it can be turned into underwriting, who's basically the surgeon that's signing off on your file. Great, I mean, that was a perfect overarching view, and uh, my next question, you might have already answered that in uh, that previous answer, but what, what causes the delays? You know, we always hear about, um, other real estate agents having their settlements delayed, never, never mind. Um, but th there are delayed, settlements do get delayed uh, because of financing. Why is that happening? I would say typically, and, and this sounds probably like I'm your mother telling you things that I've, I'm, I've already repeated, but being prepared up front is, is really the biggest issue because if I've had a chance to look at your bank statements, tax returns, pay stubs, W-2s, all those things ahead of time, I can point out to you where the potential hiccups may occur. And bank statements are a big one. If you've got deposits and transfers coming in from 10 million accounts, mm -hmm. well, guess what? Your lender's going to be asking you to source where those deposits came from, and all of a sudden that can create a mountain of paperwork that continues to snowball because then that money came from somewhere and, and so on and so forth. Uh, we, we noticed something on your tax returns, a loss that you might have may have written off that counts against your income. There's all these little things that if caught up front, you know, we can work around, well mm -hmm. hopefully work around. If they're in the middle of the process and we're just catching them a lot of times, that's what creates the problems and the frustration between. So I can't stress enough that try to get pre-approved and have your lender not only review your information, but all of the documentation that would verify that information because I would say nine times out of 10, delays in the financing process are due to a lack of preparation beforehand. 
Guys, it's just homework. It's just doing your job. They're gonna do their job, you gotta do yours. It's a lot, W-2s, bank statements, no one wants to go through Wells Fargo, and I say Wells Fargo because I, I use them as my bank, but no one wants to go through the online and figure out where all the money is. And But you gotta do it, or else you will get delayed. So it sounds like for buyers to avoid getting delayed, you know, you're gonna coach them up and they have to execute, right? You know, it's they can email you the directions, but if you never do anything with it, um, you're going to get delayed, and no one wants that. Yeah, yeah, it's just a lack. It's just a lack of preparation most of the time. Now there are uh, unfortunate things that pop up: home inspection issues, yeah. appraisal issues that. Uh, could throw a monkey wrench into things, but like I said, nine times out of ten, it's really just something being caught in your financial documentation. That, in all honesty, if your lender was doing a good job of beating you over the head and getting that to uh, to them up front uh, and alerting you on how important that was, it probably could have been avoided. So FHA conventional around 21 days, maybe call it 30 for VA because of the appraisal timeline. Let's finish it up. What's like? the shortest close you've ever had. Like talking Guinness Book of Northern Virginia, Guinness Book of Oakton, Virginia. Right. If you could put your name in there, what's the one that you're you were like super proud of your team like pulled through in the clutch and you like had the best time? Like the Usain Bolt of like loans. Well um legally yeah. can't even close for eight days because of disclosures and how long things need to be out. Um eight days very tough especially in this new lending environment. Eleven's Quick, quickest we've done yeah. in recent memory. Um, Is that all cash? Yeah, please or? don't, anyone out there, don't write your contract for 11 days. <laughs> uh, do me a metaphor. Yeah. That is, is that all cash or is that a, an actual loan? No, an actual loan. I, Holy cow. If you got all cash, you're not calling me. Yeah, well, that's, that is true. Question of the year right there. So, and then like the longest, have you, have you had something that's been drawn out and, and why was that the case? Well, uh, a lot of times uh, contracts are written for 45, 60, 90 days sometimes, and that's just a matter of when the seller's ready to get out of the house. Um, I've never had something go on very long due to internal issues, Sure, um, but certain contracts are in for a long time. New construction takes forever and a day. So. Yeah, and then when those contracts, let's say there, it's, there's a 100-day close, are you still on that time frame of, okay, we're gonna close this out in 30 days and then check in with them at, you know, once a week to make sure everything is good? or is it kind of proportional to how long it takes for the loan to close? Well, typically you're gonna want, even though it's impossible to be fully done on a 100-day closing in a few weeks just because of things that are gonna come along the process and paperwork that will need to be updated, unfortunately, you know, we're not gonna be able to use your August bank statements if we're closing in December. So there's always gonna be maintenance in the process, but for the most part, we can get the uh, worry of am I going to be approved or not out of the way long before then and to be honest you're gonna have a financing contingency in that contract that's probably gonna expire well before that long contract that we're gonna have to meet so other than some updated paperwork um, really the process should be about the same as far as all the behind the scenes work appraisal inspection uh, that's going on and, and, and coming and it's not like we're putting your file on the back burner because it doesn't close anytime soon got it Cool. Well, in this video, you learned how long it takes to close on a loan, what you can do, what you can do to avoid any pitfalls, and the shortest record for closing on a loan. Definitely a loan and not all cash. Can't believe I said that. So, hey, if you like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button. Be sure to subscribe for more real estate videos. I'll list and link Sean's contact information below. So, if you have any questions, you can be sure to hit him up. All right. Thanks for watching. Until next time, create a productive day. Take care.